So in this video, I want to talk about the recent episode of Mushoku Tensei, and there are a couple of things to discuss about. One, some cut content that I will be discussing about. I won't be covering everything that's cut because I don't really want to sit there for you know, 30 minutes going over every little itty gritty detail of the inner monologues and all that kind of stuff. Because as much as I can just tell you, yes, there was a lot of inner monologuing that happens, but that is a case when it comes to a lot of these episodes. A lot of inner monologuing always gets pruned out. That happens with pretty much a lot of animes and Mushoku Tensei is no exception to that rule sadly but it is what it is. The main thing I want to talk about is the scene between Roxy and Rudy and their intimacy and the impact on that and also some cut content parts that I think that are important but not that important. They're kind of important if you, if you really like some of those interactions but they're not like groundbreaking to the sense of it changes the whole story. And that is, of course, Ellen and Lisa's input when it comes to encouraging. Whether you want to say it's pushing Roxy into it or just, you know, nudge, 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 you know. Or also just kind of gaslighting Rudy a little bit with things like pregnancy and all that kind of stuff. There's little things like that where Ellen and Lisa is definitely trying to push these two lovebirds together in a more intimate relationship. And that is kind of hinted a little bit in the episode, but it's it's a lot more prevalent in the light novels where Ellen and Elise plays a little bit more of a proactive role in kind of pushing them together because Ellen and Elise is close friends with Roxy. And even though, yes, Ellen and Elise and Sylvia are related, uh, Ellen and Elise is a little bit more open to relationships that aren't just you know, one, one, one man and one woman, she is willing to kind of accept a little bit more. And especially with the fact that you've got Paul, who had two wives, you can see why this kind of was a little bit more accepted amongst Anna Lilies, Roxy, and Rudy. Yeah, he, he kind of goes along with it. I mean, he is in grievance as well, so he's a little bit more looking for someone to latch onto to help f soothe that pain that he's got because of course he's lost his father even though Rudy doesn't really see Paul as like a proper father figure I still think there is some part of Rudy that did see him as a father figure more later on because of the fact that Paul really rose to the occasion when it came to protecting him and I think it really also shows which was done very well at the start of the episode that Rudy doesn't want to be what he used to be and he's very adamant on that now that's where most of that cut content goes is just Ellen and Lisa's proactiveness in that where that goes you'll just have to wait and see as far as acceptance goes with El uh, Sylvia I'm not going to spoil that but the other thing that I want to discuss about is of course the relationship because one of the funny things that I've always thought was funny with season one of Mushoku Tensei was a lot of people would always use the G word the G-R-O-O-M-E-R when it came to Rudy and multiple characters in the story, and especially those that know what is to come, people use that as kind of a leverage point of being like, well, Rudy's bad because he did those things to these girls, Eris, and now Roxy was used as a point back when season one aired, and now it's kind of flipped. Like, you've got like the stuff that happened in season one, which they used as Rudy doing that. Then you have Sylvia, which they claimed did the same. And then Roxy here. So you've got these three moments that have happened in season one and two. And before season two came out, they always used that. They use that as an attacking point. But now the script has flipped. Now suddenly Roxy took advantage, which I just think is kind of hilarious when you take a bit of a perspective back. Take a step back and look at how all this discourse happens. And I think reality is... You know, I like discussing it because it's interesting to observe human behavior when it comes to people that just hate Mushoku Tensei. I feel like at the end of the day, they're so desperate at grasping at straws that that's all they can do. They can just try and look for anything and try and string it together to be like, oh, well, this is why the series is bad. But one thing I want to note, and this is something that I discussed with Ed during our, our stream together, is just because characters make bad decisions or are bad doesn't make the story bad doesn't make it a bad writer and one of the things that I've seen is a lot of hate and attacks towards the writer calling them an incel because they've created a character that has flaws which by the way cheating does happen in the real world I know crazy concept people actually cheat in the real world yeah it's actually a lot more common than I think people realize 
But the reality is, is that a lot of people that hate Mushoku Tensei don't really have much of a social skill. They don't really interact with the outside world very much, and they don't know what goes on outside the four walls of their, whether basement or their own bedroom. And so they don't know what's going on, and how Mushoku Tensei is very much a heavy reflection of what the real world is like. Paul is a great example of that, not in the sense of marrying two women. I mean, some countries there are that kind of stuff, but in Western countries, marriage is between two people, not a bit more growing in that sense. But you get the point of things like cheating, a man having multiple women that have had children that is something that yes happens in the real world that's why child support exists because of these things it's like congratulations you just learned a life lesson of why child support exists but i think it's just interesting looking at that as like the writer creates a story with human element characters and yeah rudy's made mistakes paul's made mistakes many characters have made mistakes but just because characters make mistakes doesn't make the story bad. And I feel like I'm kind of repeating myself in a lot of these videos because I feel like I have to keep re-emphasizing that because apparently this is a common issue that these same people keep whinging about. And there are some anti-tubers that of course have attacked the writer calling fans incels and all that and I think using that word really has just been watered down. And some people know who I'm referring to, a certain weeb commander, that's their name of their channel that has attacked Mushoku Tensei not understanding that this is how the real world works and because they have such a disconnect from reality they then don't understand that yeah Rudy has flaws no one's defending those flaws we just find it interesting and fun to read when you go into a story like this and see all these different types of characters with all these different kinks in their armor a point that I've mentioned in many videos another thing that I've mentioned in a couple of videos way back is Game of Thrones, when that first came out, people loved that series. And that has a lot of characters that do some pretty messed up things. But did that get cancelled? No, because people understood the difference between f fiction and reality and also understood that, hey, medieval times, and even though that has dragons in it, and our medieval times didn't have dragons in it, you get the concept that, yeah, back in those days, there was some pretty crazy stuff that happened when it came to those kinds of things. And that still happens even to this day. To be very clear. So again, just because something's in a story doesn't make the story bad. What would make the story bad is if it didn't make any sense and random things happen that just didn't connect properly. Story flow, random characters that just don't exist, randomly appear, characters dying, bringing back. Like, you get what I mean. Like, bad storytelling does exist. But just because they're bad characters doesn't make it bad. But also the writer doesn't make them a bad person just because of that. It reminds me of back when Rudy did a couple of things in the more r recent episodes of season two in Core One, and the writer was noting on the slavery stuff, and people attacked them because he was pointing out the mindset that Rudy had of, hey, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans do, Rudy understands his limitations in the world that he can't just up for government organizations and stuff and that's much more grounded he is just one individual sure he has some connections he's a very talented wizard but he also understands that he is just a one-man person he can't just take on the entire world and free everyone from these issues the, i think one of the big problems is you get a lot of isekais that are very generic and where you get this stud muffin protagonist who gets you know six hair, six girls in riven an episode or so and then suddenly solves all of these medieval world problems with modern technology and everyone's got hot springs and milk and udon and ram whatever all these different you know technological cultural revolutions and as much as those shows can be fun to watch as a popcorn kind of thing i think sometimes these very same people don't realize that that's not even slightly realistic in that again one person up throwing an entire government organization and it sounds so dumb to be saying these sentences because again it is just fiction but when you try to come a little bit more grounded in understanding that you know some of these characters aren't just you know, super beings or super saiyans or godlike creatures, these stories have characters that are limited based on it. And that's what Mushoku Tensei tries to do. It tries to show the more grounded level realisticness of characters. Maybe sure, later on we can get into some more crazy stuff, but that again is a bit of the story progression in itself, and I don't want to spoil that for 
anime only fans but i think it's just interesting to take a perspective back and look at the goods and the bads but also look at what a lot of the criticism is about because it allows us to understand where people are so disconnected from reality and it's just one of the things that i read a lot i read a lot of my comments i read a lot of twitter or x I, I see a lot of Ed's comments on his videos and also just Twitch itself and a lot of people were very upset at this episode which I just find very fascinating because of all episodes now, now there seems to be more uproar and I get it because Rudy cheated and blah 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 and Roxy initiated this kind of situation but it is just always funny to kind of step back and read it all and understand why these people are so disgruntled about it and i think again it comes down to the reality that they don't really have much to latch on to other than very very weak points and i think that's going to be the case with the ending of season two and when season three does happen i think that's going to be the case even more so much because season three is definitely going to be a very very wild ride so again i'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below what did you think of these recent episodes what do you think of this episode what do you think of the cut content again i only really wanted to go over the ellen and lee's part because i think it is important that you understand that roxy wasn't really the one pushing to do it on her own and yeah it does hint a little bit that ellen and lee did push a little bit after it happened but it doesn't show how proactive she was at the start and i think a lot of that just comes down to restraints and limitations on how much they can fit into one episode maybe if they had a whole extra episode maybe they could have fit all these extra little things but again you've also got to realize that episodes need to end on a good point as well to allow it to flow from episode to episode it's not like a movie so that also makes it harder as well again anime light novels mangas they're not the same type of mediums they are different and they have different flow and different pacing when it comes to different things so again love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below if you like this video hit the like subscribe and i'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video